So I'm here today with an awesome guitar repairman and technician, Mr. Graham Noden, uh, who works here on Denmark Street, which is not far from, from where we are at the moment. And uh, it's just an honor to have you here. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> and uh, Graham won't remember, but when I was about 17 years old, I came to you a long time ago with a guitar that was in dire need of help. And uh, you shaped it up as if it was brand new and Good. gave me lots of fantastic advice about how to string guitars and about tuning stability and things like that. And I think it's, it was really much appreciated. So, well, thank you for uh, saying so. Any, any time. So I've, I've got a guitar here that I'll be taking to Graham after this. So, <laughs> um, so I just thought um, maybe for people who don't know, uh, could you maybe just say like what you who you've worked with and things that you do and, and what you've been doing here with your business on uh, I make and repair guitars. Um, I think I'm incredibly lucky. I found what I could do naturally when I was. 17 and um, we've done it ever since um, and yeah I can't see a guitar like this like any guitar without wanting to make it better make yeah. it nicer make it play properly That's um, cool um, so I guess as a guitar repairman you probably uh, play guitar yourself so is there anything that I mean what kind of music do you like to play what do you do your own um, I, I suppose it's from folk and from rock roots and then gets weird after that. I mean, I'm in awe of almost every musician who comes into the shop because I figure they probably have some comprehension what they're doing is when they're playing music and I don't. Oh. This is a doddle. It's easy. You have a problem, you sit down, you think, you get the answer. Yeah. Music. Oh dear, no, 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 no. it's a dreadful business. So, um, yeah, I play, I can be flash, I can do this, but I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, I'm sure No, seriously, I really I'm don't sure understand. I heard so, you playing just now, it was great. Yeah, but it doesn't mean I know what I'm doing. It's just <laughs> sort of bits of stuff that run together and sound good to me. Over the years, maybe through collecting, have you got any particular guitars that you really love? Oh, I've got dozens of guitars. Um, standouts. Uh, standouts. Um, the guy who originally taught me uh, made a baritone six and baritone twelve string, um, and uh, I look after both of them uh, after many many years absence, uh, and finally um, bought the baritone twelve string. And that, that's a, an astonishing guitar. Wow. Um, there's, uh, I've got a Gibson ES120, a, a guitar I've always wanted. It, it isn't actually the greatest guitar, but I love the shape, so that's, I'll, that's cool. I'll forgive it there. Um, I've got my own guitars, I've got other people's guitars. <laughs> I, it, it's, um, I mean, it's what excites me working in the workshop. Uh, yeah. Somebody comes in and they've got a bag, a case, and you don't know what's in it. Yeah. And it could be the next great guitar, yeah. and it could be one where you have to be a little more politic about it. Yeah. Um, there are no cheap guitars, there are economic guitars. Yeah. Um, and I have finally learned to be a little more subtle about <laughs> it to people. It took a few years. How about when, have you had any like noteworthy sort of guitars come into the shop, something that you've never seen before or something that's really stood out to you? Um, the, the standout ones um, are much more the ones that really, really work that you don't expect. Yeah. Um, the, the first time I came across um, 
uh, a national that genuinely did what it's supposed to do and kicked out sound yes. as far as anyone could get away from it. Yeah. Um, because it doesn't matter what you do to most of them, they're just another national dobro whatever. Yeah. And that's okay, nothing yeah. wrong with that. But then you find one which is it. It gives, and you set it up properly, and suddenly this thing just takes over. That's incredible. And... Um, What's his name? Um, Dice Drake's lad. Uh, Mark Knopfler. Yeah. <laughs> um, three came down uh, that he bought, and two were just okay, but one of them, yeah. uh, you set it up and it just sang. Wow. And sang and sang. It was, it was it's incredible. Guitar. So you've probably seen a lot of like noteworthy guitarists in your time that maybe brought you guitars. So I've yeah, I mean, I guess over the years we've worked for most any and everybody. Um, I've heard things like Chuck Berry and well, that that's one Clapton. that really meant something to me was working for Chuck Berry, who's a fabulous little guy, amazing, uh, a real dapper, well dressed man, very polite, very pleasant. Um, and yeah, yeah, that meant something to me. It's, Incredible. Um, something cl ticked to me when I gave you a guitar a long time ago and you put it in a rack. I remember there was this rack and they were, half of them said Coldplay London on them. And I just thought, oh, oh, well, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they're, they're quite simply the best band in the world to work for. They're yeah. uh, lovely people, uh, yeah. full of interesting and occasionally mad ideas. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. You know, we'll do anything for them. They're just a joy to work for. It's amazing. Have you do you still work with them? Do you yeah. still have a report with them? That's fantastic. Yeah, there's one uh, coming in uh, when I get back that's due out. All oh, right. Now. Cool. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but you know, if, you, if you've got good <coughs> customers like that, you do what you have to to get things done when they want it done. It's yeah. Just, uh, it's worth doing. So. So, like, aside from repair work, have you ever? Are you like a, a luthier as well? Did you ever make? Yeah, I, I do make instruments, um, but it, it's got to be worth doing. If you want uh, another Les Paul Strat Tele J forty five J two hundred, blah 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 blah, please go and buy one, and I'll look after it for yeah. you. Yeah. If you know what you want, it's not out there. Then let's sort out either making it or doing a trial run economically yeah. does the idea work if it works great then I'd love to make you one um, but I do I adore making guitars work for people any guitars you put out they've been like a Noden guitar or have you oh yeah there's lots of them out there uh, I have no idea how many I'm not interested but you know <laughs> I mean we, we got uh, we, we're doing one at the moment um, for a friend of ours Luca it's um, a seven string um, three bass, four guitar, uh, a little capo across at the top to make one bass, six guitar strings. Wow. Um, and we're using um, a, a, a Les Paul Studio body, um, a couple of necks, a bass and a guitar neck, which have been Siamese together. Wow. Um, and, you know, we'll prove or not the idea yeah. at a much cheaper price. Yeah than making from scratch. If it works, yeah, I hope we'll make one from scratch. But what's the point in spending a fortune on that when we're yeah. still trying ideas out? Yeah, that's fair enough. This is much more fun. It's, that's fair um, enough. So, um, one thing I think a lot of guitarists face is keeping a guitar in tune, and uh, something you probably know an awful lot more about than most people, but... Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, it, it's possible. Okay. How many hours have we got? Um, <laughs> what Ultimately what you're looking for on a guitar is the best average tuning that will allow you to sound in tune all the way along the guitar. Yeah. Perfection is possible, right? Um, but there are problems yeah. with perfect harmony yeah. instruments. Yeah. Uh, number one, you need to be staggeringly brilliant to play them because in actual terms, you need 59 frets per octave for all the notes, for all the keys. My goodness. Uh, yeah, right. So back in the real world, there's a method we've been giving people for um, over 35 years now yeah. um, to enable you to tune and build in those pushes and pulls, which make it sound 
good all the way. Yeah. Um, see our website. Um, I think it's on there. I think my kid put it on there for us. Oh, right. uh, I've never actually looked at it, sorry. The setting up, it needs to be done properly. Intonation can only be done uh, with something of the quality of a strobe tuner. Mm. You cannot do it by ear. Yeah. And while I'm on a hobby horse, <laughs> health warning, hobby horse, um, perfect pitch yeah. would be A440.0000000, etc. Yeah. It is not A439.9, it's not A441 and very close, thank you very much. Yeah. That's a staggeringly impressive ability, yeah. but it doesn't work with memory. Yeah. And if you're trying to listen to a harmonic and a note yeah. and compare them, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but my favourite is a um, guy, he's quite an old guy now, he tunes uh, to the fifth fret, the fifth fret, the fifth fret, the fourth and the fifth fret, and he just says, I don't know what the problem's about, you just do that and it's fine. Oh, yeah. uh, but that's not what he does. Yeah. He tunes it out of tune, out of tune, out of tune, out of tune. Oh dear. But he doesn't know he's doing it. Yeah. So I daren't tell him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's screwing up for the rest of his life. Yeah, yeah. But it's another different s staggering ability that he's just evolved. Mm. But he doesn't know he's doing it. <laughs> That's fair enough. That's fair. Point. But, you know, so I, I need something I can rely on. Um, so. I'm using the beat between two notes, two harmonics, a harmonic yeah. and a note, whatever. Yeah. That beat means I can tune to within a fraction of a fraction of one hertz, and I know. Yeah. All day long, I know. Uh, as opposed, if you're listening to notes, yeah. uh, you've got five minutes and this lot just goes mushy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Try a piano tuning booth sometimes. <laughs> five minutes in there and you come out screaming for drugs, alcohol, explosives, anything, but get me out of this piano tuning booth. How about, in your experience, like, have you found certain nut designs or materials or bridge designs or materials that are perhaps lend themselves to being better, to staying better in tune? Because I mean like... Yeah, I mean you're looking for stability. The bigger the string, the more forgiving the string is, the tuning within the instrument. Yeah. Uh, and the harder you can hit them, yeah. uh, which is fun. Um, the longer the scale length, the more forgiving. So Fender yeah. is 20 mil longer than Gibson. Yeah. It is inherently more forgiving in terms of tuning within the yeah. instrument on a like-for-like -like basis. Yeah. Unfortunately, there are limits because our hands aren't that big. Yeah. Um, so baritones are great, but it's yeah. kind of hard to play some of the chords. Um, the rest of it, materials, yeah. I mean, if you look at guitars, you, you've got your main woods, mahogany, maple, rosewood, etc. Yeah. Um, yes, they're um, disarmingly pretty. Yeah. Uh, I mean, almost no one would say that the maple isn't prettier than the mahogany. Yeah. Um, well, that's fine, but I think mahogany is better. Yeah. Um, you know, prettiness is, can be overrated. Yeah, absolutely. Um, on acoustics, Brazilian rosewood is a fabulous wood. But yeah. A, you've got to be able to get it. Yeah. And B, by the time you get it thin enough to be super responsive, the damn yeah. thing cracks as soon as you look at it. <laughs> so, um, mahogany back and side spruce front for an acoustic is what I would always use yeah. because it's the best all round. Cool. Um, Indian rosewood, lovely stuff. Let's see it in coffee tables. I wouldn't have a guitar really? with it back and sides because it, it's heavy mm. and you pretty much got to use bronze strings or the guitar's dull. Mm. And I don't like bronze strings. That's fair enough. Because if you think about acoustic guitars all over the planet, they're called steel string acoustics. How about when you have, say, like a solid body electric, mm. and so so if you were to change the pickups in that guitar, mm. I mean, if you have a really great sounding guitar, good resonant body and mm. neck, it's nicely matched and stuff and well built, and you're switching out the pickups, how much of the tone would you say comes from the pickups rather than from the woods? Well, the I suppose we'd look at it around 70-30, yeah. the uh, pickups to the rest of it. Yeah. Um, the, the simplest way I know to, to give you an idea, if you take um, a 70s Les Paul standard, mm -hmm. uh, a 70s 335 and a 70s 175, yeah. uh, essentially you've got the same kit. Yeah. And all the guitars. It's just the body uh, from absolutely solid to semi solid to full acoustic. Yeah. Um, and if you think, uh, if you've heard those guitars, then you'll get an idea of the difference mm -hmm. between the sound that you get back. Right. But, uh, you know, if, if, if I was going out to buy a guitar, um, 
I've got to be able to stand looking at it. Yeah. If you can't do that, what's yeah, the point? You're you not going to pick it up, are yeah, you? Right. Yeah, right. The neck has to be around the shape, and there's a little leeway for me, but around the shape that my hand says that's a nice shape. Yeah. I want the neck to be straight or straightenable. Yeah. Fret ends, the setup, ah, who cares? That's my job. Yeah. Um, the pickups come last. Yeah absolutely last because the chances are I'm going to change them anyway yeah um, <laughs> and there's a gazillion pickups out there yeah um, so almost every sound that you would want is available one yeah. way or another but if you don't like the guitar if it doesn't sit and cuddle in the way that an electric should yeah what's that point that's true that's true <laughs> out of respect to Noel I never asked him anything really well, I mean, I, I just figured if he wanted to tell me things, he would. Yeah. Um, and at that point, that was what, in the mid 80s, so Hendrix uh, would have been dead, what, 15, 20 years by mm. then. Um, and I don't think, although Hen Hendrix would have defined a part of Noel's life, yeah. I just, Noel's a lovely man. Yeah. Uh, if he'd wanted to tell me things, he could have told me. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, if he hadn't passed away, he would have. Yeah. But, um, you know, the, the things you don't do. Yeah. And, uh, no, I couldn't ask him. That's amazing. <laughs> That's incredible. It would I be think most people would have done. In no, ways. no, it would be intrusive. Yeah. It, it, it's, I mean, Hendrix was magic. And, yeah. Um, and always will be. Yeah. And it's tragic that he's, you know, he didn't fulfil what he had to give. Yeah. But, um, no, you gotta let people tell you sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's true. Especially, yeah, I don't know, I've, I've read and heard a lot of things, so. Yeah, I, so I, 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 I know that would have maybe come out, maybe not, but, yeah. um, no. It wasn't yeah. for me to ask him. Any cool stories, any noteworthy visits, anything out of the ordinary over your time that you've just stuck with? Oh, you? Um, the cure, bless them, sending their guitars down with Kentucky Fried chicken bones tied to the machine heads. Oh my lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <coughs> Not the world's uh, greatest moment. Um, <laughs> the Hard Rock Cafe had a fire. Really? Um, oh, I think yeah. it was in the, the, the 90s they had a fire and you know they got all these guitars um, attached to the walls and yep. the picture frames behind them. Yeah. So they, they sent all the guitars down and a load of drums which we didn't need but all oh. the guitars down to be assessed and a few things about that when you t take the wrapping off the picture frame so you've got sometimes guitar on a big picture frame and you turn it round and there is a big F off screw in the back. Oh. You know, a wood screw, a two and a half inch wood screw <laughs> through the back, into the back of the neck. <coughs> oh my goodness. So oh yeah, yeah. I mean, guitars are finished, really. Well, I don't know, it's kind of hard to say. Um, well, it's <laughs> significantly really damaged, that one. But the way, where things that amused, um, Bo Diddley um, had given um, uh, a Bo Diddley guitar. Oh, and uh, Yeah, and yeah. Uh, BB had given um, a 335. Yeah. And uh, one of the American guitar players, um, one of the, 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 the great Wang Dang players, um, uh, had given uh, a double neck um, custom, I think it was a custom, is it? Uh, even a custom paint finish. Oh, Phenomenal vile. thing. It's one of those vile. lads, yeah. I mean, this is giving of a high order. Yeah. And um, a certain well known bunch of Mancunians. <laughs> Oh, right, okay. <laughs> Who don't always get on with each other. <coughs> right. Um, although I have met Noel, and he seemed a lovely man. Oasis, right, just for the record. It yeah, might have been. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they gave what I know as a Woolies or Zenta Top 20. Oh, now, maybe wow. that's what they started with. <laughs> but th there was just a, a <coughs> tiny just a element of me which thought, hmm. That's, that's, and that's generous. And then um, I think, I think um, one of the other mega bands um, gave a Strat. Right. This is about the one guitar they're not associated with. I'm, I'm sorry, this just seemed a little odd. You know, it's, <laughs> That's um, interesting. The I wall of fame. Cool. And, and <laughs> they also sent down a Telecaster. Right. Um, the question was, could the colour be restored? Right. And 
Had it been, it was well, it had been hanging on the wall for 15 years, oh, right, and I saw okay. a picky when it came in. It was a white telecast. I, I forget who gave it to them. Yeah. But it's, it's, um, it may have been someone like Buchanan or someone, but a white trademark telecaster, and this yeah. thing was nicotine brown. Oh, my gosh. So we took the plate off, and underneath <laughs> the plate, it's nicotine brown. What? So we found a little bit where we could go through the lacquer, yeah. and to a sixteenth of an inch into the wood, it was nicotine oh brown. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the answer there was no. To you, is there more of an appeal behind this whole vintage guitar thing versus a new instrument? Or because I have this, I don't know, I have this theory that the more you play an instrument over time, the better it sounds. I don't know why or how, but I've got um, guitars that sound better. Well, any guitar needs than, playing in. Yeah, uh, I don't care what it is; it needs playing in. Yeah. And I mean, I, to be honest, I ain't going on holiday because when you come back, you've got to sort of got an hour or two with each instrument to play yeah. it back in before yeah. it comes alive again. Yeah. And it's not myth and magic. It's it's a it's a bunch of ex trees masquerading as a guitar, something it doesn't <laughs> want to be. Yeah. And it's got stiff and crabby. Yeah. And it needs playing and releasing, and the fibres moving again, and it becomes what you knew. Right. Um. It's. I mean, there are guitars that the, the the sum of the parts is so much less than the bits. Yeah. We've got one at work. It's just one of those guitars. It doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't work. Oh. And <laughs> so we've used it to demonstrate certain things. But uh, you get great guitars um, in all different things. And guitars have different uses. Mm. I mean, there's the, the, the Cromwell and Kalamazoo guitars made by Gibson, I think, just before and during the war, there are, mm. you know, that you see as Roebuck guitars, yeah. um, catalogue things. Yeah. And um, one day, uh, a great um, acoustic player, Wiz Jones, came down and uh, he was picking one up, and two other guys came in bringing them in, uh, right. and they all know each other, as these people do. So they just sat down, and there's two Cromwells and a Kalamazoo, or the other way around, yeah. and they just sat down uh, and played 40s, 50s, 60s blues on these things. Yeah. Now, these instruments were the best you could get, mm. with good players, for sure, yeah. at this kind of sound. I mean, yeah. they don't suit me as an acoustic player, yeah. wanting simpler, big, open harmonies and the rest of it, but yeah. at, at that kind of delta blues. Perfect. They're the best. Wow. So almost everything has its purpose. Somewhere. Yeah. So how about like musically, aside from guitars, you I assume Music. you listen to Oh, listening. Yeah. So yeah. any any guitarists that you rate highly at the moment are out um, there? Um Yeah. Uh Fyodora Morris. Okay. Go well, go I've never go. heard of. <laughs> no, no, you won't. Um uh, Fee is a, a friend, um, I knew she was a good player and I, I got to see her a couple of months ago. Yeah. Nobody plays guitar like Fee, full stop. Wow. Um, there's, there's a lot of great players out there, that's for sure. Um, but no one plays like Fee. Fiodor Morris, go find. Well, thank you very much. And anyone who wants any guitars repaired, oh. take them to 27 Denmark Street. Please do, Absolutely. please do. Let's, um, and let's get this one done. It is. Yeah, no, please. we just need a bit of, bit of work to make it sweet again. So. It does, it's, it's lost some of its luster, I think. <laughs> it's a workhorse. <laughs> yeah, oh, they're nice guitars, simple as that. It's got everything you need to make a great guitar out of it. Just needs a bit of TLC. Fantastic. I will be taking it to you. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, Thank uh, you. See you guys in a video coming shortly after this. See you.